Hello everyone and welcome back to another Metal Gear Solid speedrun news video. Today we have great news for people that love speedrun and Metal Gear Solid 1. The original on PC and console has now found a new glitch where in the ninja fight we can actually skip all of the phases. There are two parts to the whole story and I'm going to guide you through that and also link you of course all the videos I'll show you here including of course the tutorial how to recreate it yourself. So, where do we begin? Well, El Paso, the current world record holder for Medical Solid, is the all bosses on PC. I know it's a lot of category, uh, you know, subparts. Uh, has been cooking and he wanted to get a better time here for Ninja. So, in overall, he can actually get a total time of 55 minutes instead of the current world record that he holds of 56 minutes 48. For that, he wanted to find ways to make the Ninja fight faster, where there's lots of dialogues happening and mini cutscenes, which last in total almost a minute. And with being able to skip that, we may be able to save at least a quarter of that time. Now, as it turns out, there are actually ways that we can do this. For example, we see here in his latest run that he did on August 23rd. In the final phase here, when you go, we can see that normally he has like these little dialogues here, but if we shoot him like that, he gets out his gun. And it's more reliable to actually get him to teleport all around here. So and then, much, much getting that ends the fight here. Of course, in higher difficulties, we have to give the ninja way more damage here. So the face would actually last a little bit longer and we would have even more dialogue. A little while later, Trom Boncino, another a really good runner and world record holder on his own, has also started working on the ninja fight himself. He found out, for example, that you can get this hide and seek face to be skipped using the farmers in order to delay that jumping around and hiding being invisible face. Uh, we can actually make that work here. You see here, he does start out like that. We have to fight him once, but then we go over here and do a punch punch and then throw. Then we shoot him so he gets out his katana and then do another punch punch. There we go, do that again. And we basically keep him in this loop here so we don't need to constantly chase after him as soon as we go into this phase. Being able to skip that already, not needing to chase after multiple times and for example, need to find it in three times in one of the seven different spots where he can hide himself, it's already a good update. But it didn't stop there. There's a few things that we can do, which from Machina also already found out here a few days ago. And so we can do this, for example. As we are in the segment here, I'm just going to go over here. In this little wall, if you put on a clay ball, you can get the game to soft block. It basically has the ninja being stuck in his position and the camera still moves to where the ninja would normally land in order to have the little cutscene play. And if we do it wrong, this happens. We place down multiple clay balls, the game will simply crash. When the next phase will begin, the game just soft locks like that. Not to be deterred, in November of 2022, Trom also found a different method where we can delay the second phase. We start the fight as normal, we punch punch kick. Go over here, do another punch punch kick, and then we go into phase two. And we can extend and we can extend this phase two. Basically by using throws and claymores. There's a little bit of a combination of what we've seen earlier. There we go. Sees us with the claymore in hand, we do a punch punch kick. Chase after him. And after the next PPK, Ninja would get ready to leave. So we punch once, punch, punch, kick, punch, punch, kick. And now he's like between these two shelves and we want to try to put down a claymore here and stun him like that. There you go. Same spot again. And with the damage, we can delay the next phase from starting. Phase three, the hide and seek phase. So what that basically means is if we can throw the ninja, this delays him just a little bit before the next few phases begins. And now the question of course is can we also basically extend the very first phase so we can constantly give him damage without any of the cutscenes playing? Well, Pazzo found this here in one of his runs and said he has his window on the right, so I'm going to move this over here. But you know it's Pazzo's YouTube channel. Basically what Pazzo found here is huge. At the beginning of the fight, We can do a punch, punch, kick. Then do a punch, punch and then throw him. Attack him with the farmers. Wait a short moment and then punch into him. And if we manage to actually damage him, that delays the cutscene from playing. Not quite. 
it does still play the cutscene, but we stay in control. And that is the key aspect that makes this first phase, well, not skip, a cutscene skip, so important. Because now from here on, we can keep an attacking Ninja, who will chase after us. He has his iframes off, and in the background is still the cutscene playing. We don't have any inventory being seen here. There's nobody, there we go, there will be our card. And once we see our card, we know again, okay, we're back in control. So that alone is a great time save because we can basically continuously attack the ninja despite technically being in one of the cutscenes. But of course, we want to still skip all the other cutscenes and phases as well. We, want to, we don't want to hide and seek phase, for example. So as you can see here, Puzzle posted just yesterday on August 26th, a new ninja cutscene skip plus hide and seek loop plus SOCOM dialogue skip. It's basically in a more advanced version of what we've seen so far. There we go, we just skipped the cutscene that normally plays. It still plays in the background, but we can still control Snake and attack the ninja here. We have a few PPKs. Now we're back out of the cutscene as we see that the inventory is visible again. And we're technically now in the second phase here. And so now we go to phase 3, where he will hide and seek. Hide and seek phase, we got to damage him a few times, and then we go to the next phase. That's basically the final phase, phase 4, where he will constantly go down on his knee. And we want to just try to skip his dialogues. Ideally, after two punches, he will constantly teleport around and not talk at all, and that gives us just enough time to basically continuously attack him without him talking between these phases. But that's still not where his story ends here. <laughs> so now we come back again here to... to so now we come back here to Tromboncino and take a look at his new method of RTA viable face delay. Now this is basically the combination of what we had before. We always begin in the beginning here with a punch punch kick, then do a punch punch and a throw. Then with the farmers, or with the Socom as well possible, we want to shoot the ninja to get his knife out or katana out, and then attack him again in the right time. There's like three frames roughly of time frame that we have to hit. And if you manage to hit that after the throw with a short delay, we actually can skip the cutscene. It's still placed in the background, but we stay in control as I explained. And now here comes the thing that makes basically the entire thing now faster than anything we've done before. So now we have a chance to actually go into a phase where the ninja will just stand there. Before we go to the third phase, there we go. He sees us with the gun out and now the ninja would run away from us. So now we're going to go into this corner and have the ninja dash on us. From that... We can now unequip the gun. Come on. There you go. From the corner, unequip it. And here begins now the loop. So we want to go into this corner and throw the ninja basically top right. Because of the long extended animation of his backwards flip, he will always end in this little corner. And from then on, we can just do punch, punch, kick, go back to the left, crouch, and have the ninja constantly jump on us. So we just go punch, punch, kick, crouch, wait for the dash, come back, row, punch, punch, kick. And this basically can be done until the fight is over. So we see here, uh, there we go. He just did it constantly and basically kept the ninja in check the whole time. We're technically in phase two, we never left it. And as soon as, of course, we reach the threshold of ninja's health bar here, we know that he will actually finish the fight and we can move on. We jump down here now, we're gonna hit it three times. And then we end the fight like that. No more cutscene, no more dialogues, no more bone and sinew, especially. <laughs> and with that, we also have seen now the Parsa come forward and say, all right, this works in extreme. Does it also work on the lower difficulties like easy, which is the more popular one. And yes, as we can see here, proudly proclaimed, the Parsa says, Ninja is dead. And this is how it looks like on easy difficulty. So here we go, we go here, punch, punch, kick, unequip the gun. Punch, punch, throw. Equip the gun again. Get ready to shoot. Wait a very short moment, then do another punch. And if you hit the right frame, we can skip the cutscene. Now he will chase after us. He will stand still again. And we can give him basically like almost four full PPKs as the cutscene is playing. Now then again, once we're back in control, a PPK, a punch, and another PPK. And now we get ready to go over to the wall here. We basically want to wait for the ninja again to dash us down. So even on lower difficulties where he doesn't do it that often, you can still get him to manipulate that by just crouching. After that, throw him into the corner, punch, punch, kick, come back, and do this over and over again. 
As soon as the ninja fully stands up, punch, punch, kick, and then go into the corner to crouch. And you can basically do this until the fight is over. So let's fast forward a little bit. Sometimes this will happen that he doesn't dash down on you, but he will instead kick. That can happen. But regardless, this is already so much better. Just because it removes entirely the RNG of the random hide and seek phase. And also, we don't have any dialogues that we need to listen to anymore. We're fully in control of the fight, basically. And so, yeah. Of course, I'll link also in the description down below the tutorial that I posited here for the entire fight. Shoutouts to Ilpaz and Trombogino for coming up with this new method of fighting the ninja. Um, they say that on easy difficulty, it saves around 15 seconds here in a full game speedrun, and on extreme difficulty, it can save up to 30 seconds, which is massive considering everything. You don't need to worry too much about any RNG aspects anymore of this fight, and you're fully in control. And so this leads us to the final conclusion here. Let's watch the two IALs side by side, the old method versus the new one. So on the right, you see the previous world record holder, DLimes13, basically doing the glitchless method now. We can consider this glitchless. And on the left with Il Pazzo with its new method that Trombocino and Pazzo have developed. And so if you take a look side by side, we get to see that in particular, yes, the old method of doing this fight glitchless is still very viable, especially if you have control, for example, on the PC version, there's a few extra tricks that we can do in order to save some time. For example, with the shuffle, we can move after and while cutscenes are playing. But I personally find it astonishing that we can just give him so much damage as the cutscene is playing. You can already see that his health on the left here is already so much further down. And as D-Limes now is soon getting ready for his phase 3, we're now in the loop here on the left side with the new glitch method to constantly extend basically the time. There we go. We got this one kick, unfortunately. Normally you just dash on him, it's way easier. And then we got an Ashley Lamb just going for the hide and seek phase. On the left side, the new method, we basically just need to loop the ninja over and over again. The thing also with the hide and seek phases, as I explained, there are seven different positions where the ninja can come down. You gotta chase after him, and if you're very unlucky, you gotta move from all the way to the top left to all the way to the bottom right, and all the way back to the top left, for example. Like huge distances, you gotta chase after him, and on high difficulties, if you take too long, the ninja will start running towards you and attack you. So completely removing that aspect of the RNG and just doing a nice little loop here on the side makes this fight also already way less headachy. That is even the word. Really still running over here. James got lucky that he had a close position this time, and now he's, they're moving into phase four. Once again, with shuffle, we can move as the cutscene is playing to get a little bit of an advantage, getting closer to the ninja. As you can see here, Pause is almost done. He's just gonna wait for the dash, do a final punch, punch, kick, and his health is now low enough. Never having heard any of the line lock. And Steel Arms also getting ready here. Trying to attack him basically, frame perfect before he can teleport around. Which is, I would say, still tougher to do. And yeah, as we can see here on the left, um, this is Pazzo's timer. I had to crack that a little bit. And yeah, the fight. Despite the fact that Pazzo hasn't even used Claymores, like um, the United States here in the IL, because we normally don't grab Claymores, this is only really done if you want to, in particular, do this one fight, like, all the way optimized, regardless of the surrounding full game. There we go. As we see, yeah, currently around 13 seconds time difference. Puzzle's run can be still better, as he says himself. So, yeah, if any of the speedrunners come give this new method of the fight a try, of course, I will link Puzzle's speedrun tutorial in the description down below, including all the other resources. So, have a nice little overview of the progression of how we got to this phase. But I'm personally very excited to see that there's still so much movement in a 25-year-old game like Metal Gear Solid 1. And especially with the Master Collection coming out, these new things are making this game, of course, way more attractive again compared to the other ones where we've gotten a little bit of development, but not too much crazy stuff. So who knows where the journey will continue on. If you want to learn, of course, more about this game, I can highly recommend to go to the MetalGearSpeedrunners.com website to join also the Discord, join the discussion, and learn the runs yourself if you have interest in them. My name is Alstairs, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this little update about this new boss fight method. And of course, wish you all a great day, and I'll see you in my next stream. Bye-bye.